Hey peeps, Sarah here from Sparrow Springs and welcome back to my channel. Today is day four of my TubeTober challenge to post a video every day for the month of October. And today we are breaking out the digital art. I'm working on a little bit of concept art and practicing some of my creature design. While I'm working on this in the background, I wanna share some of my favorite creature designs from a few movies. For this list, I've left out the more humanoid creatures and I'm leaning more towards the animalistic designs. But I've also left out creatures that don't venture too far from the believable animals. Now, before we get started, if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications to see when I post new videos. And we have a lot planned for the rest of October. Now for my first creature, when I think of creature designs, this one is always the first to pop up in my mind and that's the dire horse from Avatar. Honestly, I love pretty much any equine-based creature, but the dire horses from Avatar were so unique, and like, can I just stop and admit here that Avatar is a visual masterpiece? <laughs> the, the dire horse is my personal favorite, but really all of the creatures are just very fresh and intriguing. I love the tropical feel to the landscape and how all the creatures just fit in their environment. It doesn't feel like they created these unbelievable creatures and put them in our realistic world. I could go on and on about the visuals in this movie, but I have a whole list to get through. <laughs> Next up, I feel like you can't talk about creature design without mentioning the Star Wars universe, and I have quite a few favorites from this one. Now, before all the CGI, I appreciate that some of the early Star Wars creatures were either puppets or costume, but I still felt like they were quite believable. Of the earlier creatures, the Ewok stands out as my favorite. I even named my Angora rabbit after these feisty little creatures. I also named my dog Wookiee and have had suggestions to rename my horse Tauntaun, but we never got that far. Other creatures from Star Wars movies include... So Bulba, I don't know why, but just the way he walks on his hands was super interesting to me. I also like the Gungans, and maybe some of the lesser known ones I'll include here is the Reek from the Arena Monsters in Clone Wars. Also from Clone Wars was Boga, who is a reptilian creature called a... a Veractyl? Question on pronunciation. Um, but basically this kind of reptilian creature that Obi-Wan was seen riding around in part of the movie. Moving on, we enter into the Lord of the Rings realm. There are a number of creatures throughout the series, but my favorite by far and away have to be the Ents. <laughs> I love how the different types of trees translated to slightly different looking Ents, and just how they characterize them like so perfectly being slow moving, but rather honest creatures. Next, we have Buckbeak. I think a lot of people like Buckbeak, and it does not come as a surprise. I think the thing that really makes me love Buckbeak as a creature design is how, how well the different animal components blended together. The way they animated him made me feel like the mechanics all worked well together. Oftentimes I see artwork of griffins or horse blended creatures and they just look awkward and I can't see how they would move properly, but with Buckbeak it was very well done. On the note of griffins, the griffins in Narnia were so well done. Griffins are usually portrayed as these very bulky creatures. The haunches are muscular, the heads are big, the wings are small. It just isn't very convincing to me. But in Narnia, the griffins are much more slender looking and the head isn't so blatantly eagle-like, but it just looks like the whole creature belongs together rather than slapping a lion and an eagle together. And these griffins actually look like they were built to fly. Imagine that. The wings aren't just a showpiece. Now, my husband's favorite creature of all time is a dragon, so he would be quite disappointed if I didn't have at least one dragon on here, but I actually have two. First up is Falcor from The NeverEnding Story. Falcor was one of my favorite creatures as a kid. I think partially in the fact that he was a luck dragon, but he looked much more dog-like very friendly and lovable. And also another nod to the pre-CGI era. To me, there was such a wonderful element to having creatures physically interacting with the actors when they could pull it off anyways. Now with Falcor, I always wanted to be able to like run my hands through his hair. It just looks so soft, but that's the satisfaction of being able to put actual textures on a creature. 
And for our second dragon, we have Toothless. I watched some behind the scenes for the concept of Toothless and they drew some pretty heavy inspiration from Cats and it does not surprise me. Uh, the same time that this movie came out, I had a black cat that looked very much like Toothless and she was quite playful in a lot of the very same mannerisms. So when this particular cat passed away at a young age, we ended up getting another black cat in her memory. Kind of a side note, but apparently black cats will usually stay in an animal shelter longer than other cats. I don't know if it's because of superstition or if kids are just like scared of them, find them creepy, but it's silly. So I will forever ask for the black cats. <laughs> then I can have a mini toothless running around all the time. Uh, for these last few, I am moving into some more kind of basic cartoon designs. Uh, my husband and I got hooked on the anime series Naruto, and one of the main focus points for the show was surrounding the tailed beasts. While all of the tailed beasts are pretty cool, my two favorite ones are Shukaku, the one-tailed raccoon, and Kurama, the nine-tailed fox. And finally, I'm going to mention a couple critters from the Disney movie Treasure Planet. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated Disney movies of all time. It is basically a retelling of Treasure Island, but in space. So you have this kind of seafaring kind of lifestyle in a sci-fi setting. So one of the creatures from this movie is the space whales. They're only there for a brief moment, but they're still pretty cool. And for our final creature in this list, <laughs> the star of this movie is Morph. Morph is basically a jelly-like shapeshifter, and Morph is kind of a fun concept in how they portray him, and he's just adorable. <laughs> so those are some of my favorite creature designs, and we are finishing up my little creature here. <laughs> the base of this idea was a rodent cross between a squirrel and a meerkat, but I wanted to add some colorful bird-like plumage for a bit of fun. Concept art is so much fun to me, and I hope to do a bit more before the end of Tubetober, so stick around for even more fun art stuff. That's all for now, and I will see you later, peeps.